right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from a beautiful San Diego morning here. And today I'm joined by Paul McGee, who is in the UK. Which part of the UK are you in right now? Well, I'm in Warrington, which is fair to say is probably not as sunny as San Diego at the moment. <laughs> hey ho, I can use my imagination. Yeah, exactly. And here's the thing, right? So Paul is known as the sumo guy. And, um, you know, without too putting too fine a point on it, Paul, you don't look like a sumo wrestler. So you might want to explain that one for the audience. Sure. I, I started to use a phrase years ago. Sumo is an acronym which stood for shut up, move on. Um, some people think, oh, that sounds a bit aggressive. Some people loved it. <laughs> it's not meant to be aggressive, but the shut up bit is, you know, let's sometimes just take some time out, stop, think, reflect and press pause and also sometimes shut up our excuses shut up our moaning about stuff we can't do anything about and maybe shut that voice of self-doubt so it's always why we can't do stuff so it's evolved i wrote a book became a bestseller uh, a sunday times bestseller over in the uk in 05 mm -hmm. we're now doing work in schools and we have an alternative definition when we use it in schools um, because some, some, some of the parents and some of the teachers were like, shut up sounds a bit too aggressive, even for us. Maybe for some places in the US, maybe it'd be fine. In the UK, we're a little bit precious at times. So it also now stands for stop, understand, and move on. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And just for those um, listening in the US, um, Times bestseller, equivalent New York Times bestseller. So, like, fantastic achievement, Paul, on that. Um, so, here's the thing, right? Um, you know, whether it's uh, shut up or what was the other one? Stop, on, stop, understand, stop, understand. Um, we live in this. We live in a world today, right, where it seems like the reflex reaction is to talk, is to say stuff, is to post stuff, is to immediately react, right? We live in this crazy reactive world. So what you're saying kind of runs a little counter to the pervasive say, popular culture. So how do you, how do you help people understand the power of stopping and reflecting and maybe, you know, stopping talking for a moment and actually listening or reflecting? It's a powerful insight really um, about the fact that we are doing so much reactive and even now more so than ever. Daniel Kamen wrote a book called thinking fast and slow. He talked about two systems in the brain, mm -hmm our fast system and our slow system. I often think about the, the fast system, your primitive emotional brain, and I have the, the red cap. Um, I actually was given that by, I think it's actually, a, a, is it the, the Phillies? It's, 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 it's the Phillies, yeah. Yeah, the Phillies. So when I was working, doing some stuff in Philadelphia, and that fast brain is, it is reactive, it is impulsive. It's where we have our fight or flight response. And the thing is, Cayman talked about this other slower part of our brain, our higher brain, if you like, because this, the red cap is very much your hunter-gatherer type, ancient mm -hmm. old brain. And he talked about system, another system, the slow brain, and I represent this with the blue cap. That doesn't represent any American sports <laughs> team, by the way. And um, th that's the more new brain. And the reality is, we, if you imagine this was a motor car, it's like yeah. the red cap is your accelerator and the blue cap is the brakes. And in a sense, to enjoy the journey, you need the speed, but sometimes you need to step, you know, put the brakes on as well. Mm. And I think we just need to be aware that, hang on a minute, if we're going to be dominated in a reactive situation by our red cap, it's very interesting. If you, if you gave a motto for the red cap, the fast brain, it would be act first, think later, or also value feelings above facts that might have been helpful to survive on the African savanna 150,000 years ago. But sometimes it's not always the best approach. So I encourage people, engage in a sense that slow brain, that higher, more reflective part of your brain. Um, and just you know, do some stopping and understanding. And boy, do we need to do that at the moment. We, we need the fast and we need the slow brain. Sometimes we've got to react, but sometimes it's about how do we respond and reflect. Yeah, no, I love what you're saying there, Paul, because it is in some ways the art of, of reflection and taking a moment out um, is, is something that uh, seems anathema to people at times. And also because people get swept up in things, you know, and you and we were talking about, you know, the, talking about your idea of feeling the fear and, and still thrive anyway. And I think that's it. I think it's almost that people are afraid to take out that reflect, reflexive or reflective time because 
of everything that's happening. They feel like they have to join in with the mayhem and, and you know, and intellectual mayhem, if you like, and um, mm. rather than take that moment out, they think they'll get left behind or marginalized. Sure. One of the things that I talk to people about is this little uh, formula that Jack Canfield, who wrote uh, the mm. Chicken yes. Soul series, heard him on an audio cassette, so that dates exactly when it was, in my little car, 1992, mm. and he uses this little formula, E plus R equals O, and it was the event plus R response influences the outcome. And I think you can be caught up on a tidal wave, sometimes of panic and confusing activity with effectiveness. And it's just this sense of, whoa, 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 we're all facing events here. Some of them are actually obviously clearly real, although I would say yeah. some people are imagining rather negative scenarios and creating yeah. that as if it's a real event. But that, you know, it's not just the event equals outcome. It's the event plus our response, both individually, as a team, as a business, as a community. And you could argue, ultimately, as a country, how we respond to events will influence our outcome. And you're dead right. I think sometimes we can get onto this, well, what is everyone else doing? And, mm -hmm. and react and rush into things rather than go, hang on a minute. If I'm a leader, and whatever our job title is, we've all got to be leaders. And I'm very much into this self-leadership yeah. concept mm -hmm. sometimes if you're leading yourself that doesn't mean i'll just jump and follow what anyone else is doing it actually means hang on a minute what what, what do i want my outcomes to be here and what are my options in terms of how i can respond well so this slowing down doesn't mean you get caught you get left behind necessarily yeah. it could actually propel you forward yeah, no, I think so. And uh, you know, we, we're, we're big um, adherents to uh, Professor Friedman Malik's management theory. And he has, when he has the, the priorities of management, the first one is to manage yourself. Mm. And like you said, this same concept of, of self-leadership, I think it's, it's really critical. And at the end of the day, right, I, I think we have to, and, and as leaders or whatever, you have to resist the temptation to always answer things immediately right because i think you teach this i think it's a model behavior where you take a moment to reflect or even to say let me think on that and let me get back to you because i think then you start as i said you start to model that behavior to other people as as opposed to always having to immediately and feel like you have to immediately answer something it's we have to be slightly counterintuitive though because mm. i think what we sometimes see as what's a good leader what are the qualities of a good leader yeah. and and often we'll go we use this word decisive and they mm. stick to you know what they believe and they're decisive and and here's what i want us to think about well yeah maybe i will be decisive but that doesn't yeah. mean i give you my instant reaction it means yeah. i want to consider this i want to reflect and here's a terminology we use, often in a derogatory way about people, where we say they flip-flop on things, so they used mm -hmm. to believe this, now they believe that. Hey, I think it's a flipping compliment. When yeah. you say to me, well, hang on a minute, Paul, 10 years ago you were saying this, and I'm going, yeah, I've got more knowledge now, I've got more awareness, I've got more insight, I've got a different perspective. And I think we sometimes deify people who are super fast, super de de decisive, and who never change their mind. Flip and act, you probably heard the phrase, it's like the mind's like a parachute. For the best results, it's best to be open. And I think being <laughs> curious, being humble, being open-minded, they are actually key traits that we actually, in society, undervalue. Because you know what? We think it's a sign of flipping weakness, and I think it's a sign of strength at times, I really do. Not that I'm getting passionate about this at all, John. Yeah, I was going to say, obviously you don't feel that strongly about it, but anyway, <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, I, no, I 100% agree with you because like I said, we live in this pervasive culture right now and, and social media, unfortunately, has, has been a huge driver of this kind of instantaneous. And it's like people don't even think about what they say because it's all about mm -hmm. getting it out immediately like i need i'm going to be the first one to comment on that so i'm going to do and so it, it's um it's it's kind of uh, infected everything if you like but i totally agree with you for me a decisive leader is one who uh, takes a moment to to look at the landscape to bring the facts together and then maybe there are things that maybe there are unknowns and then makes their best guess and then is decisive goes with and says this is what we're going to do and move forward yeah, yeah certainly and i think at the moment Rather than we, I think we have to say we have a plan rather than the yeah, plan. Because exactly. I think at the moment, leadership is about saying, look, this is uncharted territory for all of us. 
And therefore, at times it's like, well, we need to, you know, being prepared to experiment, be prepared to adapt, see what works. I've just been on a, on a, a, a Zoom event, which I was like, was the delegate. And I was just looking at how to maybe use technology. Do you know what? We decided, I don't think we'll go down that route. But that's fine. Right. Push a door, you experiment, you try, you, can, you keep remaining curious about how you do things. And I didn't think when this pandemic hit that I'd be doing lots of virtual events. I thought, no, 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 everything will be fine in September. But eventually you think, hang on a minute, maybe I need to be a little bit more adaptive and more open-minded to doing virtual events. Because, I mean, this is absolute confession. I didn't own a laptop. My, right. I am on the road. I get the odd message on my phone. The office deal with everything. I didn't even, I've never traveled with a laptop. So all of a sudden it's like invest in a laptop, get your lights, get your technology, invest in a microphone, experiment, right. experiment, experiment. Yeah, and it's funny you should say that because, I mean, one of the things that you're saying about, about leadership is that whole idea of, uh, you know, being, being able to, as you say, it's not, it's not a plan, it's the plan. Um, we, I, I once had the pleasure of meeting um, one, of the C, one of the former CEOs of American Airlines, um, Robert Crandall, right? He's the guy who actually invented the whole uh, concept of uh, reward miles, you know, loyalty. Okay, yeah. That. And, and he, there's about five different things that are standard in the, in the airline industry today that he, he championed, right, that he, that he brought to bear. So very, you know, and somebody, I think we asked him like, well, okay, you had all these great ideas. Was there any, any ones that you had that didn't work? And he said, yes, he goes, the ticket for life. He goes, I, I introduced this thing where you could buy a ticket for a couple of thousand dollars and you could fly free for life, right? And he had done the calculations and he figured, you know, if most business travelers in the, at a certain age bought this it X amount and it would all pay off and it'd be profitable. What he didn't think was they didn't buy them for themselves. They bought them for their children, right? So newborn babies, everything. He said, so there are people still flying free today on these lifetime things. And he said it was an absolute disaster. And so he had to hold, you know, they had to stop the program. He had to hold up his hand and say, cost us a lot of money. It was a stupid idea. But that reinforces, uh, but that actually reinforced his, uh, his, you know, trust level and respect because, you know, he could easily have found some scapegoat, right? Yeah, I, I think it is about taking ownership, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. and recognising, you know, again, it's with, with hindsight, you realise that wasn't a good call. But again, <laughs> the person who never made a mistake never made anything. Yeah. It's a cliche, but it's definitely true. Yeah. So how do you talk to people now who are who and it seems and this is a, I mean, in business right now, it seems that there's a lot of people who are paralyzed right now. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's still the, the lockdowns are on. There's still some restrictions, et cetera. They're uncertain. They're uncertain about their own business. They're uncertain about the segments that they sell into all of that. And mm. they've almost paralyzed themselves to the point where they're not able to make any decisions right now. And <clears throat> they really fear. Make, they're so afraid of making the wrong decision that they have uh, defaulted to making no decision. And that's and that could ultimately harm them even more. Yeah. I think one of the things that I, I think about, and Dr. Stephen Covey talked about this in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective mm -hmm. People, is about those two circles. You've got that outer circle, which is your concerns that you can't necessarily do a lot about. And there's that inner circle, your circle of influence. And I think I encourage myself, I encourage my team, I encourage anybody around me. It's like, focus on that inner circle. Let's control the controllables, if you like. And one of them, because... I think we're going to, we, we often think about, I've got to tackle the problem, but to tackle the problem. It comes back again to, no, I've got to lead myself well. Mm. Even simple things like, am I getting enough sleep? How do I structure my day? I'm a big believer in this phrase, master your mornings. You want to be productive, mm. master your mornings. Think about things like that. I also believe manage your mental diet. We hear that word diet, we automatically think about food. One of the things I'm saying is, you know, and it's not to do the network, but I say be careful of consuming too much CNN. Constant negative news. It can derail you. It can drain you of your, of your life, your energy, your inspiration. We're consuming fake news. We're, you, know, and you know what's really interesting is people are now into this. They, they, they put forward an opinion as if it's a fact. They yeah, put yeah. forward speculation as if it's a fact. And we seriously need to 
almost like guard your heart and your mind in terms of, well, what am I consuming? What am I feeding my mind with? So I think very much when we talk about, well, how do we make decisions, not make decisions? It's like, lead yourself well. You need to get from a position of, okay, that inner circle, what am I doing? Because that boosts you, gives you some greater confidence. And you know what? I start every single day with this little mantra. What am I thankful for? I think of four things that I'm thankful for that happened the day before. Last thing I do at night, what am I thankful for? And I do a replay of the day because you know what some people are doing? They're, they're scrolling on their phones on their iPads. They're looking at negative news. There's more <laughs> pessimism. It's kind of like, and here's a phrase. I love this one. What you take to bed with you travels the night with you. Oh, and what I mean by you. that, I'm not talking about the person you might be next to. <laughs> but what you take to bed with you. What was the last thing? Just seriously, what's the last thing you watched? What's the last thing you read? What's the last thing you were thinking about? Because if that is negative stuff, pessimistic stuff, stuff that causes anxiety, one, you're not going to sleep well. Secondly, therefore, when you wake up, you're not refreshed. You become even more indecisive. And it's all about that. What's my inner circle? Because actually, if I start to think about, okay, what's the last thing I think about before I drift off to sleep? Four things I'm thankful for. Replay my day. And think about things like that. Manage my sleep. Manage my structure. Think about the importance of the quality of my connections with people around me. And all of a sudden it's like, are there things out of my control? 100%. I get my, my living is from speaking at events. Mm. There ain't no events at the moment. Yeah. When will they be? I don't know. So focus on your sphere of influence, Paul, rather than worrying about things that ultimately at the moment you can't do anything about. Yeah, and I, and I love that, Paul, because you're, 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 you know, you're singing my song there about the whole idea of, of what you put into your mind. I try to tell people, you know, like, there's no, to be honest, um, there's no such thing as the news anymore. The news is designed to provoke you, and it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you, you sit on. Absolutely. You go find you your know, news, it's there to provoke you. Yeah, with that yeah. red cap earlier on, your more primitive emotional brain, no matter what aspect of the media it is, they're not going to get your attention by appealing to your more slow, rational, no. logical part of your no, brain. No. Paper over here in the UK, the Daily Mail, a former editor said this, I have two goals from every edition of this paper, to make people fearful and to make them angry. And I think if yeah. we were to stop and press pause and think about all yeah. those media outlets that are trying to get our attention, it's like, hmm, are they possibly to using the same strategy as the Daily yeah. Mail? Me think if they are, and we have yeah. to be mindful and aware of that. Uh, yeah, I know, and it's so crazy. And then the other thing, as I said, is social media. I always say be careful too, because we live in a comparison culture and we can go on Instagram, we can see a picture of somebody and we are fantastic at filling in all the gaps around that and suddenly creating this wonderful life for that person, comparing with ours and suddenly we feel miserable. Not, nothing to do, not, through no fault of that person who just happened to do a picture, it's just us. And, uh, and therefore I think the same, I think you'd be careful about, don't consume news in the morning if you don't need to, don't consume social media, as you say, set yourself up properly. I always say, listen, if there's a meteor heading towards your neighborhood, probably one of your neighbors will let you know, so you'll be good. You won't miss it. <laughs> Absolutely. <anything>. Absolutely. <laughs> but we like, we like to feel we're in the know. We like to have that mm -hmm. sense of certainty and what's the latest that's happening. And I think we've got to sometimes ask ourselves in terms of our thinking and what we're consuming, was this a helpful thought? or a yeah. hindering thought was reading that article helpful or has it hindered me in some way and and you know manage your mental diet yeah. things you can't manage but there are certain things you can and again another phrase i use besides god if you believe in god the most important person we're going to talk to it's yourself so be careful yeah. and more mindful of the conversations you're having with yourself yeah, no, I, I love that. And actually, just uh, as seen as um, you're from the Manchester area, I have to say, you know, the last thing I looked at last night before I went to bed on YouTube was Peter Hook and the Light doing from Salford, uh, okay. February 2020, doing, you know, Joy Division and New Order. So just a fantastic. It was actually this. I, I didn't realize how good he was as a singer, you know, just being the former bass player of New Order and Joy Division. But well, you probably just, know more about them. I know about New Order yeah. and Joy Division. And I know Manchester's known for its music. I think it's yeah. fair to say 
that um, music, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's more on the back burner for me a lot of the time. I tend mm-hmm. to be a little bit consuming of the uh, more, I don't know, I'm more of a reader than a listener to right. music, but music itself can be incredibly uplifting, but I'm no expert on it, John, I have to say, so I'll, I'll bow to your knowledge. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying, it was just, fan, it was just fan, it was surprising, I was surprised when I, because I thought, oh, that's interesting, and it was fantastic, so I'm just underlining your point is that I went to sleep last night in a somewhat, uh, you know, kind of upbeat uh, mood as, as a result okay. of it. Okay, great, and it's just interesting to think about that, isn't it, and then think, okay, mm. maybe that was by accident, but just being a bit more intentional, looking mm-hmm. after ourselves. I say self-care isn't selfish, crucial to your success and your sanity. And mm-hmm. we, we, we're striving for success, but we've got to hang on to our sanity as well. Yeah, and I like that idea. I mean, I do the same here. I have it in front of me here. I have um, five things that I look at every morning that I uh, give thanks for. And I think if everybody did that, if everybody mm-hmm. found, you know, three to five things that they're really grateful for and blessed in their mm-hmm. life. And if that's how you start your day by saying fantastic, like I'm thankful for all of these things, it puts you in a different headspace. Of course it does. And we need any little, you know, even if it just only makes 2% difference, yeah. I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. I'll take anything at the moment that will give us that little bit of that edge. <laughs> we talk a lot about resilience, but I think almost before resilience is a bit of buoyancy. We've got to keep a flow yeah. here. These kind of yeah. things will help you be more buoyant and therefore in a better position to deal with some of life's challenges. And so when it's the E plus the R equals the O, well, events, so some of them are out of our control, but maybe because of how I lead myself and all the things you've talked mm-hmm. about and I've shared, we're in a better position to respond more effectively and hopefully get a better outcome. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because I mean, I feel at the end of the day that if everybody, as you said, led their self, if everybody worked on themselves and just became a, you know, a better person, a better uh, spouse, partner, whatever, a better parent, a better neighbor. You know, the, if, if everybody did that, the world would change for the positive. Instead of from sometimes just sitting there behind your computer and ranting and raving about global issues. Yeah, well, the thing is, I think some people feel that they've done their bit by complaining. Yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. Know, I understand people's right to complain and to mm-hmm. protest and get all of that. But I think we can sit back with a certain degree of smug self-satisfaction if we're not careful. Let's just do something. And one little thing that you do for one other person, like you say, if seven and a half billion people thought the same way, we're sorted. The problem is we sit back or a keyboard warrior complaining about other people's behavior rather than going, well, what's the one little thing you could do today that could make a difference to someone else? Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's uh, um, people look at what you do, not what you say. So the, the behavior you model is what's the most powerful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So listen, this, this, has been, uh, this has been fantastic, Paul. Um, all of Paul's information will be in his contributor bio. But before we go, Paul, do uh, tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do and how they can find out more. Okay, so I'm predominantly, I'm a speaker. I'm currently doing a lot of events virtually. So I've done stuff in the States, Australia, about to do something in Sri Lanka. I'm doing quite a bit in the UK as well. And, um, and also I write books. So if ever anyone's going on to Amazon, just put Paul McGee, M-C-G-E-E, or look me up on Google, the sumo guy. And the thing I'm massively excited about is actually later this year, I've got a new book coming out in my 12th book. It's actually aimed at kids. So it's all about was like life skills to last a lifetime, but we've done it hopefully in a really fun, creative, very, very visual way that's really appealing for young people. So, and if you want to catch me on on social media, at the Sumo Guy for Instagram and also for Twitter as well. Yeah, fantastic. Wow, that sounds really interesting, Paul, the the book for kids. I think that's uh, great. And uh, maybe you come back later in the year and talk about it. Be interested to hear more. Would love to do so, John. All right. Well, listen, uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, Enjoy the rest of your evening there in the UK. Uh, This is John Golden from Sales Pop and Sales Magazine Pipeline or CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.